The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, is not just a murder, it's so much more than that. It's bigger than all of us, you see. It's a catalyst for conflict that will change the course of history. Previously, we looked at innovation, industrialization, and imperialism in 19th century Europe. The beginning of the 20th century within Europe was a generally peaceful time. European nations collaborated to avoid war, but growing tensions and tangled alliances would soon pit them against each other in a conflict that would explode into a full-scale world war. Today, we will work together to solve the case of Archduke Franz Ferdinand by examining the facts, the scene, and the murder. As you discover suspects throughout the video, be sure to pause and add them to your graphic organizer in the PDF. We will use the following guiding questions to investigate our case. How did nationalism, militarism, imperialism, and alliances contribute to the tensions between European nations in the early 20th century? What was the significance of the Balkan Peninsula in the lead-up to World War I? Why did the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand lead to the beginning of World War I? As we begin to uncover the big picture question for this unit, what did the Great War actually achieve? We'll start by examining what was accomplished by European nationalism and militarism in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Before we connect the dots on our case, we need to know the cold, hard facts. In the early 20th century, nationalism was on the rise in Europe. While it could unite nations, it also created competition between them over resources and trade markets. This led to elevated tensions over territorial disputes. For example, in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870, Germany defeated France and annexed Alsace-Lorraine, a predominantly French-speaking region that had been part of France for centuries. The annexation was a major blow to French pride and had significant economic consequences for France. This event caused French nationalists to push for a larger military. France and other European powers began promoting militarism, or the glorification and promotion of military power as a way of demonstrating their status. The growing imperialism of European nations in Africa and Asia led to rivalry and mistrust, prompting countries to strengthen their armies. For example, the tensions created over the great game in Afghanistan and Persia between Britain and Russia that we learned about in Unit 10 inspired both empires to bolster their military power. By 1914, Germany, Austria-Hungary, Russia, Italy, and France all had large standing armies and their generals had plans for mobilization. In the late 19th century, alliances were forming in Europe. Prussian leader Otto von Bismarck, fearing French retaliation after the Franco-Prussian War, created the dual alliance between Germany and Austria-Hungary. Italy later joined in on the secret agreement forming the Triple Alliance. Bismarck also formed a treaty with Russia, further isolating France. However, when the new ruler of Germany, Kaiser Wilhelm II, came to power, he forced Bismarck to resign and chose not to renew the treaty with Russia. Kaiser Wilhelm II was a nationalist leader who saw war as an opportunity for German expansionism. This led Russia to form a military alliance with France. Germany was now in a difficult position, potentially having to fight a two-front war with France and Russia. To make matters worse, Britain, France, and Russia formed the Triple Entente out of fear of Germany's growing navy. With all these entangling alliances and secret agreements, I'm definitely going to need another board and some more red string. Are you ready for your first shot at being a detective? Pause the video here and answer the question, how did nationalism, militarism, imperialism, and alliances contribute to the tensions between European nations in the early 20th century? Now we return to the scene of the crime to look for clues and discover more suspects. 
Our scene is the Balkan Peninsula, also known as the powder keg of Europe. Its volatile state at the turn of the 20th century was a key factor in the build-up to World War I. The Ottoman Empire was in steep decline as rulers struggled to maintain control over their territories. The disarray eventually resulted in the formation of independent nations such as Bulgaria, Greece, Montenegro, Romania, and Serbia. Nationalism was particularly strong in Serbia, which wanted to extend its borders to support Slavic people, an ethnic group in Central and Eastern Europe whose languages share common threads. Austria-Hungary had taken advantage of the turmoil in the Ottoman Empire and annexed several primarily Slavic territories, like Bosnia and Herzegovina. Fearing rebellion in these territories, the Austro-Hungarian government opposed Serbia's expansionism. Tensions between Serbia and Austria-Hungary grew. Serbia vowed to reclaim Bosnia and Herzegovina, while Austria-Hungary was determined to prevent this by any means necessary. Nationalist groups with radical members began forming in Baltic states to oppose Austrian imperialism. The Black Hand, for example, was a secret nationalist society based in Serbia. One member of the radical group was Gavrilo Princip, a Bosnian Serb who fervently opposed Austro-Hungarian rule in the Balkans and wanted to unite the South Slav peoples into a single nation. Alright, Junior Detective, are you ready for your next test? Pause the video here and answer the question, what was the significance of the Balkan Peninsula in the lead-up to World War I? The day was June 28, 1914. The Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary and his wife, Sophie, were riding in an open-top car while visiting Sarajevo in Bosnia. Suddenly, two shots rang out through the street. Panic broke out! Sophie died almost instantly, but Ferdinand lingered for a short time before also succumbing to his injuries. So. Here we are, back where we started, but now we know the facts, the scene, and the murder. All that's left is to solve the case. Pause the video here and write down your best guess of the assassin and motive of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand in your PDF. Luckily, I, the great detective Brian, have already solved the case. If you guessed the Yugoslavian nationalist Gavrilo Princip, you've just been promoted. Princip was angry over Austria-Hungary's many land grabs in the region and thought the first step to creating an independent Slavic state in the Balkans was to assassinate an important leader in the Austrian government. What he didn't know is that European powers had been forming the tangled secret alliances for years leading up to 1914. This murder is bigger than all of us! After the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, Austria made a series of demands to Serbia as retribution since the Black Hand was largely a Serbian nationalist group. Serbia agreed to most of the demands, but suggested that an international conference be held to negotiate the remaining issues. Austria rejected this offer and declared war on Serbia. Russia's strong nationalism and pride for Slavic people closely tied them to Serbia. Seeing a potential to seize more land from the upheaval in the Baltic Peninsula, Russia mobilized troops to the Austrian border in support of Serbia, laying the last domino to trigger the series of events that would lead the world into war. Well, detectives, pause here and answer the question in your PDF. Why did the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand lead to the beginning of World War I? This was one of the biggest cases in my career and more importantly marked the beginning of the deadliest era of human history. World War I led to the collapse of empires, the redrawing of national borders, and the creation of new countries. But it all started with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, a seemingly small event that had far-reaching consequences. In our next case, we'll explore the domino effect that would pull the entire world into war, as well as the deadly gridlock many countries would find themselves in on the battlefield. Keep your detective hats on and your eyes peeled for more clues to unravel the mysteries of the Great Wars, because clues and history are everywhere. Hey.